The Sega Dreamcast is my favorite home console of all time. I think it's the best. But I'm going to show you in this video how to turn something already great into something amazing and modern for 2021. So kick back, relax, thank you for joining me on Gamers Overdrive, and let's take a closer look at beasting the Sega Dreamcast for 2021. Welcome to Gamers Overdrive Retro Mode. Insert coin to play. All right, everybody, so to make this incredibly beefed up, jacked up 2021 Dreamcast, there are a few things that we need to do. Uh, the first thing is, well, I began working on this Dreamcast last year, actually. So this is uh, the original launch model of the system. This is the American launch version. This was given to me by Mr. Chin Lee, uh, co-founder of Gamers Overdrive. And uh, a lot of memories in this box right here. But to play it in 2021, it's not easy. The connector, you know, it it's, was made for uh, an old CRT TV, which I don't have. And there are some options to play uh, with VGA. If you have a VGA box, if you wanted to play on an LCD monitor, computer monitor. Uh, but what I ended up doing was, when I brought this back from the States to Turkey, uh, I realized that I couldn't play it, first of all, because of the power unit. So the power supply is different depending on which region you get your system from. So the American version's power supply looks like this. And if I were to plug this into the wall here in Turkey, the entire system would probably catch fire. It would explode. Uh, so I had to swap this out. Now, I swapped this out with a power supply called a, a universal power supply that I found on AliExpress. It's a bootleg, unofficial power supply. It looks very similar to this, a little less crowded. When I open this up, you'll see what it looks like. And that was working well, so I could actually use the system here without having it explode and burst into flames. But uh, the next thing that I discovered was that I could replace the disc reader inside. This is the original uh, laser disc reader. See, that's the laser eye there. And you can replace this. This is where the CD would go, or the GD, as they call it for Dreamcast. You would pop it in. So normally when you open this up, you would be looking at the top uh, circle piece right here. Pop the disc there. But I removed this and I put in this amazing thing called a GDEMU. So the GDEMU is uh, a really cool device that allows you to trick the system into thinking that it's reading games off of uh, a standard disc, but you're actually reading off of ROMs. So, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. You're playing, you know, games on the original hardware, but ROMs, and they run perfectly, from my experience. There are a couple here and there that uh, might have some issues uh, in running, but once, if it gets running, it's, it's a perfect emulation. Uh, so, I replaced this, and you'll see when I open it up, I put the GDEMU inside. But, that presented a new problem. Because when you do install a GDEMU into a Dreamcast, it increases the heat significantly. So, my power supply, while it was working, the new one is working, uh, it was running extremely hot. So I couldn't play for more than 30 minutes at a time, because the entire system would just get incredibly hot. So, my workaround solution for that is this little beauty right here. And this is what I'm going to be installing today. So this is the Pico Dreamcast power supply unit, Pico PSU, you can see right there. This is version 1.1. And this thing allows you to replace the standard style Dreamcast power supply, which you can see the, uh, that's the outlet right there. We're gonna replace that with a 12 volt standard 12 volt adapter and what that does the reason why we're doing all this funky stuff is because it will transfer all of the heat out of the system and into uh, just the basic plug here so I'm gonna use a standard 12 volt very important they use a 12 volt plug by the way uh, 12 volt plug so the heat will go here instead of inside the console 
And you might notice if you see I said that I was in Turkey, we have European plugs. Uh, so I'll have to switch this out for uh, European style two prong stick prongs. Um, but that's the plan. So basically what I'm doing is I'm running the GDEMU and I have a, like, about, I don't know, 30 or 40 really amazing Dreamcast games that all run perfectly. And I'm running that inside. I am also running, well, hoping to run this power supply unit so that there's no more heat. I won't have like, the heat issue anymore. And let's take a look. Let's open this bad boy up and see what it looks like inside. Now, I am not any kind of a tech genius. The Dreamcast just happens to be incredibly easy to work on. It's really easy to unscrew and to take apart. Uh, I'm really glad they made it that way. It's just a few simple screws. Uh, wait, one, two, three, uh, four, five simple screws. I'm not using a standard uh, kind of an electronic sized uh, screwdriver. And that's the Phillips head. So, um, yeah, it's very, very easy to take apart. And you're looking now at the bottom here. Yeah, some screws fell out, don't worry about that. Uh, but here is the bottom, and there you go. So if you look inside, you can see this right here. Let me take my screwdriver. This side right here, this is the bootleg power supply that I have. So I got that from AliExpress, it was like 20, 25 bucks. Uh, and it works fine, it does the job of this and it just allows you to use any type of a power source, um, whether in Europe or America. It's a universal power supply. It's just a simple hack job that you know they made. And it works, it does, uh, does the job, it serves the purpose well. But, you see how big it is. It's very big and it conducts a lot of heat. And so that's the problem. Unfortunately, I have to remove it. And, but the cool thing is I get to replace it with this tiny little thing. This tiny little board here is going to do the whole job of this beast. So, over here you can see this is the GDEMU. So the GDEMU is just this one single board and it has a micro SD, uh, what do you call it, slot right there. So I have my games, my ROMs on that micro SD. You pop it in there, you plug it, it's so easy, it's literally plug and play. This thing pops out, it looks like a very complicated piece, it pops out like nothing. Just a few simple screws, a handful of screws, and it comes right out. And you replace it very simply with the GDEMU. And it has a few uh, plastic feet that just keep it in place. And so while it might look complicated if you're not familiar with the inside of the Dreamcast, it's actually pretty simple. And again, very simple to take apart, very simple to put back together. So it's a very uh, noob-friendly hack, and that's exactly what I am. I am not a professional, I'm not any kind of a tech guy. But I do like to tinker around with stuff if I know I'm not going to destroy it. And so this is one of those easy do-it-yourself projects that I'm into. So while this is open, uh, I'm going to take this guy out. I'm going to replace it with the Pico PSU right here. This thing is pretty hard to find, by the way. Uh, now it is anyway. It used to be everywhere, but now it's a little bit harder to find. I bought it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below, but it's not currently available on Amazon right now, but I will still put the link anyway. All right, so let me take this bad boy out and get to work. So this bootleg power supply literally just pops right out. I didn't even have it secured with screws. Didn't need to, it fit in just right, right into this little plastic spot here. And uh, I just unplugged it basically from the little prongs. I don't know if you can see that right there, see these prongs here? So I just popped it right up and I'm gonna reattach the new power supply. So here it is, we have the Pico power supply right here and there's two areas where you need to connect it one is right here so this is going to go into this two prong slot and these multi prongs let me lift that closer that little multi pronged area is going to go into this uh, little piece right here this plastic piece okay
Okay, so you can see we have the Pico right here. Now I was trying to put this thing on off camera like a dum-dum and I was trying to stick it this side down. That is wrong. You're supposed to stick it into the holes on the bottom. You can see those holes there on the left side under my index finger. So those holes are the ones that uh, are the entry for the prongs. So it will look like this when it's correctly installed. So let me just... Okay, this little guy is in now. Very easy to snap in once you're doing it in the right direction. Uh, this is the little 3D printed piece that sticks into the slot where the original power supply was. That took a little bit of finesse. It took me about five minutes to uh, shake and shimmy that thing down in there. But let me focus that up. See, it is now uh, in there securely and I don't think it's ever coming out. It's extremely secure. 3D printed to the exact specifications. <laughs> so it might take a little while to get that in there, but don't worry, um, you will get it in there with a little bit of a, as I said, finesse. So then it's just a matter of uh, squeezing your wires in there. You can arrange them any way you want. And let me now put in, once again, this GDEMU. And let's take a good look at that. There it is right there, GDEMU. I have a Samsung memory card that I'm using. And this thing is just a legend. This is really the brains of the whole operation that allows this Dreamcast to be modified in such a uh, modern and accessible way for ease of access, ease of play. You can dump your own games onto a uh, memory card uh, or find other means of getting them. And uh, I'm just gonna pop this one right in here. This also came with a 3D printed a uh, little slot stand for it. Okay, I flipped it back upside down. I'm putting the modem back in. This is again a very simple, just pop it right in type deal. And four screws and we'll be good to go. We can test this guy out. Now once all this is installed, this area here where the disk drive was will be empty so you can actually see inside of the system right down to the SD card for easy access. This is an optional uh, 3D printed kind of extender that allows you to extend the uh, SD card with a band so it leads all the way down into the GDMU. I only use it actually to, to close off the hole. I just think it looks cooler with it all closed off. I don't use the extender. So there you go. Now like I said, I am not a professional. Uh, I am not a super tech guy, but I do like tinkering around and Dreamcast is just one of those systems that happens to be extremely easy to uh, open and play around with. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna plug this in and see if it works. I hope it works, fingers crossed. And let's do it. Don't forget we're using a 12 volt power supply here. Very important, uh, don't use anything else or you might fry your system. But wait, you say, how am I going to connect this Dreamcast to a modern HDTV? I'm gonna use the Hyperkin Dreamcast to HDMI adapter. Very, very simple plug and play solution. This goes into the back of the Dreamcast, very simply. This goes into your HDMI TV, and then you play the game. Very, very simple. Uh, there are other ways to get a, a clearer, crisper picture, I guess, but this one works just fine for me. So, highly recommend it. Hyperkin. If you've ever wondered what a Dreamcast looks like on the inside when it's running, here it is. Uh, the PSU is working perfectly, the G uh, GDMU loaded up no problem, and here we go. I have on my screen here, Street Fighter 3 Double Impact, and using the classic Dreamcast controller, working perfectly, I'm going to now secure everything up and do it the right way. Now, as much as I love this controller for nostalgia's sake, it is definitely not perfect. It feels really cool just as a nostalgia piece, but again, there are many things that I would change about it if I were the designer. And then there's this guy. So this is the final piece of the puzzle, and I've been waiting a long time for this Retro Fighter Striker DC gamepad. This thing is incredible, and I'm going to show you what's in the box. They've done amazing controllers for the N64 and many more, some of them wireless, uh, but this one is a Dreamcast uh, specific controller. It's wired and it works only for Dreamcast and in my opinion this thing fixes everything that was wrong with the original. Um, now, 
it's you see they kept the same color scheme which is very cool keep that nostalgia going but the VMU window where the VMU goes is now considerably larger so when you pop the VMU in the window is a lot clearer you can see more of the real estate there it's also compatible with every just about every single uh, attachment for the Dreamcast controller and you may remember there were plenty of them so here is my uh, jump pack for vibration back in the day we had to have installed devices to add rumble to our controllers uh, then we have the ergonomic design it just feels amazing in your hands it's like it was just it, it's perfect it feels so good uh, it's now this is specifically designed with fighting games in mind which is great because the Dreamcast has so many amazing fighting games arcade perfect fighting games and this controller while very cool and beautiful in its own right it just doesn't do the job so that's where this one comes in so the buttons feel amazing uh, the deep if you look here at the analog stick it finally has a, a divot there so you can get a much better grip on this thing now the old one had it was raised and it had little dots on it. Feels cool in a way, but you can't really get full control. The D-pad on this, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say this is one of my all-time favorite D-pads. This thing feels great, which is essential for fighting games. Now it has the uh, trigger buttons. They're a little mushier than the original, but more importantly, it has shoulder buttons, which the original did not have. So for uh, Street Fighter games, this is now perfect in my opinion. As a guy who learned how to play Street Fighter on the Super Nintendo, I am so used to having the hard punch and hard kick up here. Uh, so this is now perfect, and not just for fighting games. This thing is great for every Dreamcast game. It just works the exact same way as this one, but it feels better in almost every conceivable way. Mission accomplished, everybody! So we are now in the GDEMU. Uh, menu, we're using the amazing new controller from Retro Fighters, and take a look at this game's list. I have all the essentials, so I'm going to start at the top. I've got your Crazy Taxi 1 and 2, House of the Dead 2, Power Stone 1 and 2, I've got Sega Rally 2, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Soul Calibur, one of the greatest fighting games of all time. We have Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3 Double Impact, Third Strike, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Jet Grind Radio Project Justice Marvel vs. Capcom Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Virtual Fighter 3 Team Battle Ready to Rumble Hydro Thunder Skies of Arcadia Daytona USA Silver Resident Evil Code Veronica Echo the Dolphin Dynamite Cop Zombie Revenge Capcom vs. SNK2 The King of Fighters Dream Match 99 King of Fighters Evolution Fatal Fury Mark of the Wolves Ikaruga Cannon Spike Giggling Giggling 2 Gunbird Grandia 2 Ale Bleed, Metropolis Street Racer, NBA 2K2, F NFL 2K, NFL 2K1, 2K2, World Series Baseball 2K2, Virtual Striker 2, Virtual Tennis, Virtual Tennis 2, Samba de Amigo, de Amigo Sega Smash Pack Volume 1, and of course, Shenmue. I hate Shenmue, but I have it. Uh, <laughs> Sword of the Berserk, Headhunter. And that's my list. I think I have an incredible collection of Dreamcast games. I am now the proud owner of the ultimate beefed up juicy 2021 Sega Dreamcast. Now it is up to modern standards and I'm going to play it now. Thank you so much for joining me guys. See you next time on Gamers Overdrive Retro Mode. This without a doubt gets an overdrive rating, of course. See you next, next time guys and please subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends and comment below. Thanks a lot.